Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. Jesse and Aaron are both gone. Jesse's not like dangerous, right? I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> You'll be one of us soon. Oh There's something to be said for films that wear their influences on their sleeve. The most sincere form of flattery being imitation and all that. But there are carbon copy imitations, and then there are directors who take that which influences them and apply their own creative spin on it to bring their horrifying vision to life. Which I'm always in favor of, no matter how weird or wild the film can get. It's just a matter of how long it takes a director to reach these wholly original horrors that can be somewhat taxing. And today's review highlights the promising, nightmarish mind of writer and director Andrew Merrill with his 2019 film Rot, which is currently available to rent on Amazon Prime Video. We're introduced to Madison and Jesse, whose relationship has hit a bit of a rough patch. Madison's grad program is stressing her out, and her thesis is only making things worse. Jesse is unfulfilled with work while excelling at misreading the trajectory of their relationship. And then a strange entity infects Jesse, who succumbs to its will and sets out to wreak havoc on Madison and her friends' lives. It's a disturbing premise that feels very much like a love child of Cronenberg and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. My main gripe is, it takes too long to get to the film's truly memorable moments that draw inspiration from this director in this film. Let's get this out of the way now. Rot's narrative is rough. While actress Chris Alexander does a solid job of making Madison's stress and turmoil palpable for the audience, the rest of the performances don't stack up nearly as well. This makes it difficult to really care for or feel anything for any other characters. It's a double-edged sword in that we're lucky that Rot's lead is memorable, given the larger cast of mostly boilerplate and vapid characters are just not. And then there's the film's pacing which feels as though it could have been streamlined a tad more, given you can begin to see where the narrative is heading sooner into the film rather than later. It's a shame that so much of Rot feels like aimless scene after scene stacked upon one another because the last 20 minutes of the film includes one of the most batshit sequences of the year in the best way possible. Periodically throughout the film, it is impressed upon the viewer that the thing residing within Jesse is spreading to other people. This snowball mentality of the number of infected growing but also working in tandem with one another is largely where the allusions to body snatchers come from. This works well, especially considering Rot doesn't feature much in the way of practical effects or gore for much of its runtime. But don't you worry, these moments are coming. A majority of the scares and tensions of the film stem from the paranoia that Merrill infuses into the fibers of the film. Most of the infected look just like you and I, and that's what makes them terrifying. As Madison's friends begin disappearing one by one, the reality is that a group is targeting them, begins to really sink in, and the perpetrators could be anyone. One particular scene in which Jesse's roommate realizes that he doesn't know a single one of the 30 plus people standing in his apartment under the pretense of celebrating his birthday makes for a terrifying realization. The horde is here and they slipped in right under our noses. An element that does make Rot's concept somewhat more frightening is that it serves as a disturbing metaphor for toxic masculinity and relationships. It's no accident that Madison and Jesse's relationship ends around the time Jesse becomes infected. But for a majority of the film, his actions aren't that dissimilar to that of a scorned lover. Controlling and manipulative being a part of Jesse's vernacular, infectious entity or not. And while Rot's handling of these metaphors isn't exactly subtle, I can appreciate the ways in which Merrill implements them to flesh out Rot's narrative. Now, I can't not discuss the last 10 minutes of the film, which, given how underwhelming the majority of the film is, was too insane to not spoil. So if you haven't watched Rot, there's a major spoiler incoming and some real gross details. So you've been warned. And now for a brief intermission. If you've been enjoying this episode of Daily Horror Habit, please take a moment to subscribe to the show on your preferred streaming platform or leaving a review on iTunes. 
and thank you for your continued support, which drives the show's success. And now, without further ado, let's get back to today's horrifying episode. So, Madison turns up at the nursing home where Jesse works and is immediately surrounded by infected. She stumbles upon Jesse's non-infected roommate, who's tied up, a very naked Jesse rocking a seriously mutated Hellraiser-looking dick, and a slew of his infected followers surround her. Jesse gives her an ultimatum, kill his roommate with a hammer or he'll kill her sister. Madison gives in and kills Jesse's roommate, but then her sister begins to laugh as she too was infected and Madison fell right into their trap. Now, Jesse tells her that she will be his and that they will rule together. And then the Hellraiser dick starts to move. Yeah, if you're uncomfortable hearing that description, imagine having to watch it. To the creative team's credit, the practical work on this very gross package is, well, very gross and disturbing. And if you thought things were gross, you're not ready for what comes next. In a last moment bit of separation from her toxic relationship, Madison cuts off Jesse's package with a knife. But when it lands on the ground, it begins writhing and sprouts legs and scurries off behind a pile of furniture. I initially was like, hey, that's a pretty disgusting nod to the thing, replacing a head with, well, you know. And then Jesse's severed package comes back from behind the furniture and is now 10 times the size, as a monstrous dick monster that Madison has to stab to death before it sprouts more and more tentacles. It's hard to do the scene justice, but it is far more disturbing and grotesque than my very reductive description of it. The sexual implication, the practical work, and Merrill's continuing to ratchet up the intensity for the entirety of the final 20 minutes is a testament to his horror potential. It's just a shame that he couldn't sprinkle more of these creative terrors into the rest of the film. If anything, Rod has made me a fan of Andrew Merrill's potential. He clearly has a disturbing, unique vision that blends real-world sentiment into nightmarish monster madness. It's getting to these memorable moments in a more timely manner that needs refining, and for those reasons, I'm hesitant to recommend Rot to everyone. If you're like me and are willing to endure a film's rougher elements in lieu of a big final payoff, you might give it a shot and get something out of it. But for most, I'm not sure the memorable payoff is worth the lengthy ride to get there. But if you want to see the insanity for yourself, check out Rot, which is available to rent through Amazon Prime Video. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Daily Horror Movie Review. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.